Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel and welcome back to another party prep. Today we are doing a fifth birthday party for my son Carter, all about Power Rangers. I wanted to first show you this little photo collage I had made at Walgreens with him from birth all the way up into five years and these photos are just so bright and beautiful because I recently discovered the Lenza photo editing app. I love this app. It's so incredibly easy to use. You just pick which picture you want and I'm gonna show you a selfie and then at the end I'll show you a little side by side. One of the things that I really love about this app is that you no longer need to edit your photos with multiple apps. You can just do everything from start to finish using Lenza instead of like having to switch back and forth between different apps. It has a lot of cool features. For example, with just one click, you can make the perfect portrait, which is what I did with all of Carter's photos. I just did a little auto adjust. And then with the help of the sliders, you can adjust the processing of details individually, whiten up your smile, remove bags under your eyes, and even out your skin tone and so on. You can also edit the background so you can add depth, blue, or even replace it. And this is especially useful under the current situation since we're all sitting at home with the same backgrounds. You can also process the foreground and background of the photo separately and apply filters or even just adjust color corrections. It's all in one app and I'll show you how to do it on screen here. So if you're interested in checking out Lenza, I have a code for you that will give you a discount. The code is beauty30 and I'll put it on screen here and I'll have everything in my description box below, but this before and after is amazing. I also wanted to share with you this free birthday party list that I made to help myself out on my website. It's tiffanybeeston.com. You just go and download it for free. You don't have to subscribe or anything. I just wanted to help you all out. So let's get started with these balloons. So the first thing I do when I'm like starting to decorate and just get things ready, just lay everything out to see all what I have. So I just ordered a bunch of different colors for this Power Ranger birthday party. Um, there weren't a ton of Power Ranger decorations out there, so I kind of just went with the color theme and then whatever Power Ranger decorations that they did have out there. Most of the decorations I wound up getting from Amazon or Party City. And this, you guys should be so proud of me. You guys watch so many of my party prep videos where I sit there and blow up every single balloon by myself. But I finally took your advice and got this balloon pump. It was like under $25 and a huge lifesaver. Now I just need to figure out something that can also tie my balloons for me because my fingers were like so raw after tying all of these balloons. All right, so now that all two million balloons are blown up, I'm going to put them on this balloon arch kit that I got. I'm also going to later on make a simple balloon arch out of um, just the balloons and the balloon arch tape that I've used in the past. And since I've done both of these, the kit that I'm using right now that you're watching is 100% worth it. Um, 
when we were done the party we deflated the balloons and saved the clips so that i can use them for ella's birthday party which is in august and we are doing a ballerina brunch um but yeah i feel like you need a lot less balloons with this arch kit um whereas when you're using the balloon tape i had to use like a million more balloons so this is how the arch comes you kind of just snap it all together and then you put a little holder on the bottom that can clip to any table and then it just kind of bends once you click it on the table and you'll see how I do that. But this is definitely the way to go. And I purchased this on Amazon as well. So before I go ahead and set up this balloon arch, I'm actually going to put up this backdrop that I got on Amazon. And I realized that it came in a bunch of different pieces, so I had to sit there and tape the pieces together. I did not realize that before I bought it. Um, and there's also like a big section that goes on top that says happy birthday that we wound up just putting on the table instead of on the banner. So we're gonna put this as a little backdrop first and then put the tablecloth on and then put the balloon arch up. And finally, we are just going to go ahead and put the tablecloth on. So after putting the balloon arch up, I did not like the way it was centered with the backdrop. So I went ahead and moved it after all of that work, but it was 100% worth it. Now we are moving on to my second balloon arch that will go outside with our pergola. The hardest part about all of this and what kind of set me back in time a little bit was that there was like a 90% chance of rain the entire day. Otherwise I would have just set up mostly everything outside. Um, so what wind up happening during the party was I wound up bringing all the food that I set up inside outside since people were like staying outside. Um, so yeah, I would have just done that from the beginning if I had known the weather held out, but I'm really happy that the weather did hold out. It didn't start to rain until right before we were about to open presents. So we opened presents, um, and then came inside and it was just perfect. So I'm grateful for that. So I can't complain, but you will notice that this balloon tape is very inexpensive, but it takes a lot more balloons. And a lot more work and all of this work is totally worth it because look at this face the next morning when he woke up moving on to baking and cake decorating so for cupcakes i'm just doing plain old box gluten-free vanilla cupcakes because carter is a vanilla boy he loves vanilla he also loves strawberry ice cream, which I think is kind of cute because I don't know many kids that prefer strawberry ice cream. So anyway, doing easy box mix for this. Um, 
I mentioned this on my Instagram stories and a lot of you agreed with me that baking just gives you anxiety whereas cooking you can kind of just go with the flow and like add different flavors but baking is just like an exact science and I don't know it just stresses me out sometimes not the box as much as like from scratch baking the box does stress me out sometimes because I feel like my oven just makes up its mind on how it wants to cook depending on the day so in my opinion these cupcakes came out slightly overcooked but anyway gonna go ahead and make these vanilla cupcakes and then we are moving on to my um, from scratch chocolate cake this recipe is from the icing artist and i used this chocolate cake recipe um, for tanner's baby shark birthday and really liked it so the first batch of cake that i did make um, wound up forgetting the sour cream which is like a big component it still came out really well, but the second cake for the second layer that I made, I remembered the sour cream. So I was just distracted. I was on the phone and like just doing a million different things. And yeah, but it still came out okay. So my cupcakes are done and I'm just putting them on a cooling rack and then we will move on to that chocolate cake I was talking about. So I will leave this recipe in the description box below, so don't even worry about that. Um, but the first step you need to make this chocolate cake chocolate is to dissolve some boiling water with some cocoa powder. So I did that first and then I'm just putting all my ingredients in the KitchenAid mixer and going from there. Also, you'll notice that I am the messiest baker no matter how hard I try. I just wind up every time I use my KitchenAid mixer getting stuff everywhere no matter what I do. It is so exciting when your cake comes out and doesn't break into a million pieces, which is why I'm really happy with this, as you can see here. Um, I just got this little cardboard cake holder, something I always forget to do um, for birthday parties and then like wind up scrambling on where what I'm gonna put my cake on. Um, but I found this at Michael's and I'm just using good old fashioned um, cream cheese vanilla icing before I go ahead and put my fondant down. Also, this cake is huge. It looks like it's small on screen here, but it's actually a really big cake. So now that the cake is all icing, I am putting down some cornstarch and rolling out some red fondant. Um, I worked with fondant once on a much smaller scale, like probably six years ago. 
Um, so I was pretty proud at how this came out. There were plenty of mistakes made along the way, but now I know for next time. But one thing I will say, it was incredibly hard to roll out. I had to have Chris help me at one point. And then when we went to go put it on the cake the first time, it completely fell apart. And one thing that I was lucky enough to read before I started was that if your kitchen is a little bit warmer, that you should use powdered sugar instead of cornstarch. So the second time that we went ahead and rolled this out, I used powdered sugar and that definitely made it stick less. Just something to think about, but you can imagine how badly I felt like I wanted to cry at this point when the fondant just completely fell apart um, from getting stuck to the counter. I wound up rolling it back into a ball and starting all over again and then we used two of our little cutting board inserts to get it onto the cake, um, whatever works, right? Don't let this discourage you because this was one of my first times using fondant and I would definitely try to use it again. Now that I finally got the fondant on the cake and it was looking kind of decent, I feel like I got a little bit too confident and thinking it was smooth sailing from here, but this was just the beginning. This side came out really good and then I thought I could just keep smoothing. I didn't know that you're supposed to pull the fondant out to kind of get your um, sides to smooth out. So on the one side, I completely messed it up. So what did I do? I made some more fondant decorations and tried to cover it, but we all have to start somewhere and we all have to learn. And at the end of the day, Carter loved this cake. I was way too hard on myself about it, but I feel like I learned a lot and we all have to start somewhere. So to glue your little extra fondant pieces on, you just put a little bit of water on the back and it sticks really well.
So this is a food paint that I got from Amazon. I'm just using a metallic silver and painting that on. Okay, so now that the cake is done and all of my meltdowns are done about that cake, I am just trying to make some red icing and I also just failed miserably at that. Like no matter how much food coloring I put in, first I used a gel and then I used a liquid and I just still had this like pink looking icing. So yeah, that wasn't a win, but the kids loved it. Now we are moving on to goodie bags, one of the best parts about a kid's birthday party. And I just got these little buckets from Party City, they were $1.50. We kept this birthday party to just our parents, our siblings, and our nieces and nephews. Um, usually we invite all of our friends and all the kids' friends and things like that, but this year we kept it small. And now for the other best part of a kid's birthday party, a good old pinata.
This is the night before the birthday party. I'm just getting all my ingredients ready for my pasta salad the following day just to make my life a little bit easier and I don't like to make pasta salad the day before because I don't like how the gluten-free noodles get. The texture gets just not good. So I'm just prepping things for my pasta salad and then I'm gonna go ahead and make my coleslaw. I just make the KFC copycat coleslaw. That's what my family always uses and I like to do that the night before because I think that it just marinates really well overnight. So before I go to sleep for the night, I just laid everything out and just made myself a list of everything that still needed to be done for the following day. And just so you know, even with all of this prep and everything that I tried to do in advance, I still only had 10 minutes to get ready before the party started. So it is the next day and we're just going to go ahead and finish up that pasta salad. Right before my noodles are done being cooked, I go ahead and add some frozen veggies and let them just thaw out and that is how my family has always made their pasta salad. We also use Italian dressing in there and crab meat which is another thing that a lot of families don't do in their pasta salad as well. So all that's in here is gluten-free pasta, string cheese, cherry or grape tomatoes, some frozen veggies, and Italian dressing. It's so easy and everybody loves it. Even the kids, um, the brand of pasta that I showed you in the beginning, I would not recommend that, but we actually had a hard time finding gluten-free pasta. I don't like using pastas that have a ton of corn in it. I don't like the taste of it and I just, I don't know. I just don't like it. So if you can find a brown rice based pasta, those are definitely better. And then this little stand I got from Big Lots and actually I'm using it as part of my summer decor, but I used it to set up the plates and all of that. And I love just having one spot where everything was. So when people ask you, you can just say, right on the white tray. <laughs> and then this was that photo that I showed you in the beginning. I just put it on red construction paper and these little Power Ranger, um, they look like stickers, but they're not. They came with the little um, cupcake picks. So I just wound up taping them on. And then I, you know, it had everywhere from being born up until five years. Um, and then Chris is just going ahead and putting up this balloon arch outside here. And then I'm going to hang up these little um, Power Ranger swirls that I picked up from Party City. So I only got to do a couple of these before my chair started wobbling and Chris was like, get off of that chair. I will finish that for you. Um, but I really like how it all came out.
Okay, so we are headed back inside and I'm so sorry if this video is all over the place, but this is reality. I am all over the place when I'm trying to plan for birthday parties and, you know, do everything. I try to learn from past experiences to make things easier on myself. And usually I order food or order the cake, but lately I love making the cakes myself. I feel like it's like a fun challenge and I also just love to tell my kids like mommy made this for you. Um, but we called to order food from Wegmans, which is where we normally get food catered from in the summer, just because we do like easy food, like cold cuts and, um, you know, rolls and things like that. But since the catering just opened back up here in Pennsylvania, they only had a very small variety. They couldn't give us rolls and they couldn't give us, um, like any lettuce or anything to go with it. And it just sounded like it was going to be pointless for me to try to get food from them. So I decided to just grill and we only grilled a couple of things. I usually go too crazy with the grill too, like doing like all kinds of meats and stuff, but we only did hot, bur hot burgers. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Cheeseburgers, hot dogs and sausage. And that was more than enough. And then we had the pasta salad, coleslaw and beans. So that, it really wasn't that big of a deal, but Definitely don't make yourself crazy trying to do birthday parties to do it all. Like if you can delegate anything, you totally should. Um, I just really feel like what set me back with this party only slightly was um, not knowing what the weather was going to be because I waited to set up tables and all of that stuff, which I could have done ahead of time. Um, but again, like I said, I'm incredibly grateful that the weather held out for the party. So I hope that you all enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up. And no matter what kind of party you're doing for your kid, you are doing an amazing job and don't be too hard on yourself. And the next party prep will be in August for Little Miss Ella's Ballerina Brunch. So again, don't forget to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up.